Welcome to EuroPCR 2024. I'm Piera Capranzano. I am the deputy editor of the PCR EIPCI textbook, and I'm here with Robert Barr to discuss the to discuss the chapter on 2023 ACS guidelines that uh, you kindly accepted to write uh, for the book. So, Robert, could you describe the content of this chapter? Yeah, well, in this chapter, Piera, and thanks for the invitation, uh, we wanted to uh, tease out the parts that were most relevant for the interventional cardiologist. We want to focus on invasive management of acute coronary syndrome, obviously, on the related issue of antiplatelet and antithrombotic therapy, looking at uh, revascularization, in particular in multivessel disease, and the issues that arise for day-to-day -day practice. That's great, Robert. And uh, what I really like uh, about this chapter is that uh, you not only uh, reported the indication of guidelines, but also you commented on new studies that were published after guidelines. So my question is, would you change any recommendation in light of these studies that were published after guidelines were released? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, actually, when we were writing the chapter, we looked back at the guidelines and we had an opportunity to say, well, since we closed the consideration of data for the guidelines, what new studies were published? We looked at the intravascular imaging studies. In particular, when we were publishing the guideline, we knew that there'd be new studies out, including Illumian 4 and October. Uh, so we included some uh, discussion of these. There was also additional studies in terms of uh, multivessel revascularization patients with ACS, including Multistars AMI, which looked a little bit more of the timing. And then there were additional dual antiplatelet therapy studies, most notably STOPDAPT3, which was published at the same time, uh, as well as additional studies with mechanical circulatory support devices. So would we change uh, guideline recommendations uh, now based on what we learned from these studies? I'm not so sure. Certainly it'll be a job for the next guidelines task force uh, to discuss among themselves. I think we were quite forward looking. I think we anticipated a little bit the results of these studies, yeah. even though we didn't know the results. I agree. Uh, thanks, Robert, for this glimpse uh, on your indications. And finally, I would like uh, to ask you why our colleagues should read this chapter. Well, we hope the uh, chapter is concise. We hope that it's focused on the most relevant issues for the busy interventionalist. And we hope it's a little bit forward looking and uh, includes some updates of studies that have appeared in the public domain since the guideline uh, recommendations were made. So Robert, I agree. I would uh, strongly suggest uh, also to our readers uh, to, to read this chapter because it's really an easy to read overview, very useful uh, for our readers. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you for this uh, interview, for your valuable contribution to the textbook, uh, which now, thanks to all contributors and outstanding authors, can be considered the, a leading source of education for interventional cardiology. So thank you for your contribution.